Hello again. So welcome to my class, Computer Fundamentals and Programming. So today we'll be discussing about input and output. So this is now the module two. So first, what is an input? So it is any data and instructions entered into the memory of a computer. So take note, it is any data or any instructions. So first, what is or what is the meaning of data? So data is a collection of and process item including text numbers images audio and video all right so it's any instructions so what are those instructions so let's say you want your computer to solve uh, a math calculation let's say five times five so it is an instruction that you want your computer to do all right so where are those data came from so it is coming from our input devices so as you can see right here, we have a keyboard, a mouse, a touch screen, a touch sensitive pad, a stylus, a graphics tablet, and a game control, and so on and so forth. So we have a lot of input devices. So mostly, or all of those are hardware devices. Okay, so what are input devices? Again, those are hardware devices or hardware component that allows users to enter data and instructions into a computer. So next, what are those commonly used input method? So we have here a keyboard, a mouse, a touch screen, a biometric device. So I know that you guys already know what is the purpose of a keyboard, mouse, touch screen, and a biometric device. How about data collection device? All right, so let me just explain this one real quick. So data collection device collects, sorry, data collection device collects the data from the surroundings could be humidity, the cleanliness, the temperature, and so on and so forth. Okay, how about MICR? So this is like a pen. Do you guys have any idea what is an MICR? So MI MICR stands for Magnetic Ink Character Recognition. So this one is used, uh, most commonly used by banks. So they use this to scan and read the information from checks, say to verify the... Uh, information whether the check is a real one or a fake one okay so how about the magnetic stripe card reader so magnetic stripe card reader so we usually use this one in uh, stores or in uh, a mall or in a cashier this is where they swipe your uh, ADM card or a debit card you know this is one way for you to pay All right, so we also have here attached sensitive pad, an RFID reader, a stylus, a graphic tablet, a game controller, a microphone, what else? A barcode reader, an optical mark recognition, a scanner, and a webcam. So those are the commonly used input method. Okay, so first let's talk about keyboards. So it is an input device that contains keys users to press to enter data and instructions into a computer or mobile device. So as you can see right here, we have the keyboard, uh, like you know, a typical keyboard, a Windows keyboard to be exact. And then we have here the keyboard of uh, a Mac keyboard and an Apple user for those Apple users. So we have two types of keyboard. We have the QWERTY keyboard and then the Libra. So QWERTY keyboard is based on the type typewriter keys with 101 to 105 keys developed by Christopher Schultz. So it was he invented this year 1868. And we have another uh, type of keyboard is a Libra. So as you can see right here, we have a different implementation. So yeah, same with A, but this one is Supposedly, this one is S in you know in our modern keyboard nowadays. The one that we are using nowadays. And this one has a different implementation or different format. All right. So maybe before maybe the story of this one before is, uh, this one created a different implementation, a different format, and then this one created uh, another format. So this person, uh, maybe is a competitor of Christopher Schultz, but maybe. You know, as time goes by, people realize or people think that a QWERTY keyboard is much more comfortable and much more faster to type rather than using a Divra keyboard. So maybe that's the reason why uh, this Divra keyboard didn't have many sales and then uh, forced uh, to close. And maybe that's one reason 
why uh, this Libra keyboard is not uh, famous nowadays. Because this one is much more comfortable and so, you know, maybe in every way, this one is much better than this one. So there are also various types of keyboards in addition to standard keyboards found on desktops. So we have a keyboard of a laptop, a clip in or a clip on tablet keyboard and a touch screen keyboard or on screen keyboards. Okay. So we have wired keyboards and then wireless keyboards. So its name is Pix already. Okay, so for wired keyboards we use the USB port to connect to your computer and then for a wireless keyboard it is using the technology of bluetooth and then irda right All right so for a wireless keyboard of course it is using a battery to power your device that transmits data to the computer or mobile device using wireless technology so for example we have a uh, especially popular key uh, popular keyboard with tablets because they do not require a usb port and are easy to pair with devices okay so you don't need to use a cord anymore or a port to connect your keyboard to your tablet so you can just use a bluetooth keyboard okay so we also have here the corded keyboard or the uh the one that has a wire okay we also have a software keyboard so it is often take the form of computer programs that display an image of of a keyboard on the screen so it is popular in touchscreen and enabled cell phones. And we also have foldable keyboard. So it is made of plastic or silicon which can be rolled or folded on itself for travel. So this one is you know another invention, but the quality quality of this one is you know not the same as the the, the, the typical keyboard. So maybe the lifespan of this one is maybe a year only or a month only. Of course, the connection of this keyboard is not that the same or not as that compact as our typical keyboard that has a plastic cover like this one, uh, a literal soft plastic or a silicon. We also have a projection or laser. So it projects an image of keys, usually with a laser, onto a flat surface and uses a camera or infrared sensor to watch where the user's fingers move and will count the key as being processed when it sees the user's finger touch the projected image. So it's like, you know, the Iron Man thing where you, some uh, text or some numbers are projected and then you can touch through air, you know, maybe it has a sensor wherein if you put your uh, finger in that part, it will automatically sense that that part is being pressed, you know, something like that. We also have the optical keyboard, so it utilizes light emitting device and put the sensors to optically detect actuated keys. So they are quite similar, but just a different technology. And then, of course, keyboard are designed ergonomically. So it has a design that reduces the chance of repetitive strain injuries, incorporates comfort, efficiency, and safety into the design of the workplace. So one good example of that one is this one. Yeah. All right. So as you can see right here, they have, those two have different implementation. So a keyboard must design ergonomically. Okay. So this one is maybe a lot, lot, lot more comfortable rather than using a DivRock implementation. So that is one reason maybe DivRock didn't become uh, a good keyboard. Okay. We also have keyboards on mobile devices. So of course, typically are smaller and or have fewer keys, some phones have predictive text input, which saves time when entering text using the phone's keypad. So we have here a touch keyboard or an on-screen keyboard. We also have here a mini keyboard or a keypad. You know, I have this one before. And then next, a mouse. So it is a pointing device that fits under the palm of your hand comfortably. So could be an optical mouse, a laser mouse, and a touch mouse. So here's the parts. 
of our mouse so we have here the right button left button and then the wheel button and then the optical mouse and then for some uh, some mouse has this one a thumb buttons basically you will see this one for a gaming mouse you know, they, they use this one to uh, activate a skill or activate anything you can actually program this one then we have here the mouse of uh, an Apple version or a Mac version. So it's so simple. We only have uh, Three parts. Maybe we also have the right click the left click and then you know an optical wheel button Okay, so You know minimalistic quite simple So next we also have other pointing devices. We have the trackball So it is a stationary pointing device with a ball on its top or side so instead of you know the roller is below of the typical mouse nowadays this one is a trample the trample is on the top this is this is what you use to control the cursor okay now we have touchpad is a small flat rectangular pointing device that is sensitive to pressure and motion we also have a pointing stick it is a pressure sensitive pointing device shaped like a pencil eraser that is positioned between keys on a keyboard so touch screens so it is a touch sensitive display so this is one example of a touch screen an all-in-one pc okay we have a touch screen of your smartphone we have a touch screen for let's say reserving in a hotel or uh, in ATM banks, so nowadays our ATM machines are touch screen. We also have stylus and digital pen. Stylus is a small metal or plastic device that look like a tiny ink pen but uses pressure instead of ink. So basically a stylus is, can be seen in a Samsung device, you know, the Note version. So it's like a pen, a pencil, where you can, instead of using your finger, so you can use that pen to control your screen, okay? We also have here a signature capture pad. So this is another device wherein you'll be needing a stylus to write your signature. So this is the stylus. Then we also have here a digital pen. So it is slightly larger than a stylus. It provides more functionality than a stylus. So it's featuring electronic erasers and programmable buttons. So as you can see right here, this man is like designing or an animator, okay? So instead of using a paper, he's using a certain pad or a device wherein you can write uh, digitally. Yeah, as you can see right here, he's designing his maybe own character or an anime or a cartoon. Yeah. We also have a graphics tablet, so it is also called a digitizer. So electronic, it is an electronic plastic board that detects and converts movements of a stylus or digital pen into signals that are sent to the computer. So this one, the man that is using is a digitizer. So it's a graphics tablet wherein you can use your stylus or digital digital pen to write anything or to draw anything. So as you can see right here, this man is designing some circuit. Okay. So next, we also have motion input. So sometimes it is called a gesture recognition. So it enables users to guide on-screen elements by moving a handheld input device through the air. So this is the example of a gesture recognition or a motion device. So controllers translates motion of golf swing to move the golf ball on the screen. So as you swing this device, you know, it detects maybe emotion or it detects the uh, change of position. All right, so what is this ear gesture again? So ear gesture involves moving your body or a handheld input device through the air. If we have ear gesture, we also have facial motion. So facial motion captures or converts people's facial movements into digital format while they talk, smile, and many more. Okay, so this one is for security purposes, you know, to, to unlock a certain device or to unlock a certain door. We also have voice input. So it is a process of entering input by speaking into a microphone. So before, until now, we have a microphone onto our cell phones. Uh, because 
that is one way for us to talk to the other person. So again, it is the process of entering input, your voice, by speaking into a microphone. So that's the purpose of a microphone. How about voice recognition? So it is also called a speech recognition. Is the computer or mobile device's capability of distinguishing spoken words. So it is also using the microphone, wherein once it detects the certain words or the certain keywords, it will act or it will search for something or it or it will open something or it will do something for you. You know, it's like an AI. We also have video input, so it is a process of capturing full motion images and storing them on a computer or mobile device storage medium. So what are those video input? So we have here a record video on a digital video or a DV camera, and then will be transfer video to a computer or mobile device. We also have here a webcam, so this is another type of a video. So it's a type of DV camera that enables a user to capture video and still images, send email messages with video attachments, and live images to instant messages, broadcast live images or over the internet, conduct uh, video conferences, and then make video calls. So nowadays, we use that one or we use our webcam or the camera of our phone to make video calls, okay? And then also conducting or to conduct a video conferences. So people use this one to have a meeting online. Yeah, yeah. So see for nowadays, all people need this one a video conferencing. So what is a video conferencing again? So uh, it's a meeting between two or more geographically separated people. Use a network or the internet to transmit audio and video data. So this is one example of a video conferencing. This is another uh, example of video conferencing. So as you can see right here, we have three people and then in that place there are uh, eight or nine people, yes. So they are conducting a meeting. You know, they do that one through uh, a network or through an internet. We also have scanners and reading devices. So what is a scanner? Is a scanner is a light sensing input device that reads, print the text and graphics, and then translates the results into a form of the computer can process. So one good example of that one is a flatbed scanner. So it works in a manner similar to a copy machine, except it creates a file of the document in memory instead of a paper copy. Okay, so instead of putting that one into a paper, it puts that one into a form of a software. Okay. So in here we have uh, the steps on how a flatbed scanner works. So step one. Place the document to the scan face down on the glass window using buttons on the scanner or the scanner program start scanning the process. Okay, so of course you have to connect that one to your laptop. So it could be through wire or through uh, wireless technology. The step two, the scanner converts the document content to digital formation, which is transmitted through the cable of the computer's memory and saved on the computer's hard disk or SSD. So this is one like you know, a camera where it captures anything that is uh, laying in there and then it will be saved into our computer as a digital. So once a computer, users can display the image, you can print it, you can set it uh, in an email message or include it in a document or place it on a web page. So it is now in a form of a software. All right, so optical reader. So it is another device that uses a light source to read characters, marks, and codes, and then converts them into digital data that a computer can process. So one is an optical character recognition, or the OCR, and then optical mark recognition for OMR. Okay, and then another example is a barcode reader. So as its names imply, uh, it scans or read the codes. This one, this one is a barcode, okay? So for you to read that one, you need a barcode. And then another example is a QR, or a QR code, or a quick response code. So it is also known as 2D barcode, so it stores information in both vertical and horizontal direction. So this is uh, another example 
of a code but in terms of a 2d barcode so this one is a barcode this one is a 2d barcode next we have an rfid reader or it stands for radio frequency identification so it uses radio signals to communicate with a tag place in or attached to an object so what is an rfid reader so it reads information on a tag via radio waves rfid can track right so tracking times of runners in a marathon so tracking location of people and other items checking lift tickets of skiers or skiers managing inventory uh, gauging temperature and pressure of tires on a vehicle checking out library books providing access to rooms or buildings so that is the purpose of an rfid reader so it reads information on the tag via radio we also have mag stripe reader or a magnetic stripe so it read the magnetic stripe on the back of cards so this one's like the black one such as credit cards entertainment cards bank cards identification cards and other similar cards that has this kind of technology and then an MICR so again I told you a while ago that an MICR is a device that read text printed with a magnetized ink so as you can see right here those are actually magnetized ink those one okay so it converts uh, I might say converts character into a form of the computer can process so banking industry uses MICR for check processing so they check the legibility of this uh, check maybe this one is a fake one you don't know so they use an MICR to verify whether this one is a real one or a fake one next is a data collection device so again as I told you a while ago so this is a device that obtained data directly at the location or the surroundings where the transaction or event takes place so they usually use this one in restaurants grocery stores factories warehouse the outdoors or other locations where heat humidity and cleanliness are not easy to control so they do this one to check the safetyness of a certain place Can you imagine that one you know eating in a restaurant and then you know you don't know if the air or the surroundings are not clear so this is one good example to check whether the surroundings are clean or no now we're done with the input so let's move on to the output so what is an output so it is a data that has been processed into a useful form so the one that you're seeing into your screen right now is an example of an output so this is another example of an output so it's a uh, a printed text that is uh, came from your computer okay so this is another example of an output device so a printer uh, the screen of your smartphone graphics from your uh, camera another screen another kind of a printer maybe this one is a three-in-one printer and so on and so forth so yeah, a speaker or anything that you can see that or that anything that you can hear is an output all right so where are those coming from of course it came from a display device so a display visually conveys text graphics and video information so anything that you see that is being provided by your computer is an output so where are those display being displayed so it is being displayed into a monitor so it is a display that is packaged as a separate peripheral device so one good example of that one is an lcd monitor right so if we have an lcd monitor we also have an led right so what is the difference or what are the difference between those two so lcd is using the liquid crystal display technology wherein it has a polarized glass that can block or pass through light but in led it is using a light emitting diode technology wherein it is using it's like a mini bulb wherein you can dim or you can uh, adjust the brightness so led is actually a better invention than an lcd so this one has an sRGB or it 
uh, it can provide the steam color other than so as time goes by uh, we now have an OLED so what is an OLED so it is an organic LED so it uses organic molecules that are self illuminating and do not require a backlight so it consume less power okay so this one is of course much much more expensive than an than an LED but this one uh, consumes less power so if we have OLED we also have an AMOLED or retina display technology so AM stands for active matrix and then OLED is now the organic LED so it's like so it is now the upgrade of OLED display all right so what are the things that we need to consider when buying a display or when buying a monitor so first is the resolution so it is a number of horizontal and vertical pixels in a display and second we also have a response time so it refers to the time in milliseconds ms that it takes to turn a pixel on or off so for tv so this one is not uh, that important but for a gaming monitor so this one is super super important you know you don't you should see that it already respond on your screen so that's the response time and also the brightness so it measured in nits so unit of visible light intensity equal to one candela so it is formerly called candle power per square meter so candela is a standard unit of luminous intensity now if it's just a television so you should consider the resolution and the brightness so it is very important but if you're a gamer let's say a gaming monitor you should consider the resolution and then the response time or brightness you know not that much one uh to have a delay when playing so as you click your mouse you don't really put your computer uh outside like a tv it could be outside more on outside that has a lot of lightings but for desktop or a personal gaming computer you always put that one in you know not that bright not or not directly to sunlight so the others are that pitch it is also called pixel pitch it is the distance in millimeters between pixels on a display we also have contrast ratio so it describes the difference in light intensity between the brightest white and darkest black that can be produced on a display so for display device to display the highest quality images, the monitor should plug into a JVI or a digital video interface, this one, and then an HDMI. So HDMI stands for High Definition Media Interface Port, which is this one, and a display port, wherein it supports DVI and HDMI. So I guess the latest technology nowadays is the HDMI. Now let's move on to the DTV or digital television. So it is for alternative display. So some examples of DTV is HDTV, which stands for high definition TV. So it is the most advanced form of DTV. So if we have HDTV, we also have a smart TV. So it is an internet enabled HDTV. So you can call that TV a smart TV if it has capability to connect to the internet also have a plasma display so it uses gas plasma technology which sandwiches a layer of gas between two glass plates and then a printer so it produces text and graphics on a physical medium before purchasing a printer ask yourself as yours okay, so before purchasing a printer ask yourself those questions so we have 1 to 19 so what is your budget how fast my printer print do I need a color printer and so on and so forth so in that way you'll be able to save some money just know the things that you'll be needing on the printer that you're going to buy in the printer we actually have two kinds of printer we have the non-impact printers and then the impact printer that's fine okay so let's uh, go to the non-impact printer first so it is a form of characters and graphics on a piece of paper without actually contacting the paper. So we have those uh, printers. That is an example of a non-impact printer. So as its name implies, it doesn't need to touch the paper. Okay. So we have here an inkjet printers, a powder printer, a laser printers, and all-in-one printers, a thermal, a thermal, 
a mobile a plotters, a large format printers. So first, what is an inkjet printer? So it's forms of characters and graphics by spraying tiny drops of liquid ink onto a piece of paper. So in here, so in here, uh, the key point is spraying tiny drops of liquid ink onto a piece of paper. So that one is an example of inkjet printer. So it could be a color or a black and white format. So the speed is measured by the number of pages per unit or BPM you can print. So this one is an example of an inkjet printer. So how does an inkjet printer works? So we have here the paper and then the firing chamber. Step one, the small resistor heats the ink, uh, causing the ink to boil and from a vapor bubble. Step two, so the vapor bubble forces the ink through the nozzle. This one, and then the ink will drop onto the paper. So this one now is an ink is dropping to your paper. So step four, as the vapor bubble collapses, fresh ink is drawn into the firing chamber. So that's how an inkjet printer breaks so without touching the paper. So next one we have photo printers. So color printer that produces a lab quality pictures. So many use inkjet printer technology. Peak bridge standard technology for photos allows you to print photos directly from a digital camera. So it print from a memory card. So that one is an example of a pot of printers. Next is the laser printer. So this one is high speed, high quality, a better color, and a black and white color. So, so I could say that this one is more better than a photo printer and an inkjet printer. So this one has a higher speed when it comes to printing, higher quality, better color, a better black and white color. Okay, so this one is an example of a laser printer. Next one is an all-in-one printer. So it is also called multifunction printer or an MFD, single device that prints, scans, copies, and in some cases, faxes. So sometimes called a multifunction printer. So this one is an example of an all-in-one printer. So you can see that it's an all-in-one printer because it can print, it can scan, it can copy, and in some cases, it do faxes. Okay, we also have a thermal printer wherein it generates images by pushing electrically heated pins against the less pins against the heat-sensitive paper or a dye sublimation printer. So this one is an example of a thermal printer. So we also have here a mobile printer. So it is a small, lightweight, battery-powered printer that allows a mobile user to print from a mobile device. So this one is an example of a mobile printer. We also have a label printers. So it is a small printer that prints on an adhesive type material that can be placed on a variety of items. So. We also have here a label printers. It is a small printer that prints on an adhesive type material that can be placed on a variety of items. So uh, they usually use this one into a product wherein it prints a barcode or a QR code and it has an adhesive type where you can put that into a product. And the plotter printer. So it is used to produce high quality drawings such as blueprints maps and circuit diagrams so it is a large format printer creates a photo realistic quality color prints so this one is the one that you're always hearing that type tarpaulin now let's move on to the impact printer so it is a form of characters and graphics on a piece of paper by striking a mechanism against an ink ribbon that basically contacts the paper so just like this an impact printer and then other output devices so we have uh, a speaker so many users attach surround sound speakers or speaker system to their computers game consoles and mobile devices to generate higher quality sounds so this is an example of a speaker we have here the satellite speakers the center speaker the subwoofer and then another, another satellite speakers we also have headphones and earbuds 
So what is a headphone? So it is our speakers that cover or are placed outside of the ear. So this one is a headphone. How about an earbud? So earbuds also called earphones. So they are just the same. So it, it rests inside the ear canal. How about a headset? So it is a device that functions as both headphones and a microphone. All right, so just a fun fact, you know, to avoid misunderstanding, if you say headphone, it is only a speaker. If it's a headset, it has a speaker and a microphone, a headphone and a microphone. It's a two in one, okay? Next is a data projector. So it is a device that takes the text and images displayed on a computer or mobile device is skin and projects them on a large screen. So I guess all of you already know what a data projector or an LCD projector is. So this one is an example of LCD projector wherein it projects an image, okay? So we have two types, actually. We have an LCD projector and then a DLP projector. So DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. And then LCD stands for Liquid Crystal Projector. And so next one is Interactive Whiteboard. So it is a touch-sensitive device resembling a dry erase board that displays the image on a connected computer screen. So it is like a whiteboard, which is... Uh, a touch sensitive device wherein you can write digitally and then you can erase digitally so quite awesome and then another output devices so we have here a joystick or wheels a game pads motion sensing and game controllers can be considered output devices when they include force feedback so we have here the wheels and then where you can accelerate and then brake and then we have here the game controllers or the game pads and then uh, a motion sensing device okay so it is a technology that sends resistance to the device in response to action of the user next is assistive technology input and output so it is a head mounted pointer so this is one example of assistive technology so what is this head mounted technology so you need a camera or a receiver and then a reflective tracking surface attached to the beam of head so in here we have here like a a, a technology wherein it will be read by our camera and then let's say it is like a, a barcode or a qr code this one is for security purposes and then we have a braille printer so that's it for the module 2 the input and output Alright, so that's it for the module 2, so see you next time.